Okay, so this is the tenth lecture, and today we're we'll start we're we'll start on a new topic, which are elementary matrix operations. So, given a system S, as pictured as this, well, we can associate a matrix with the coefficients. For the coefficient, we associate a matrix here, and the value B here, we can associate a matrix here. Now. An elementary row operation are either three of those, one of those threes. So interchanging two rows, or multiplying one row by a non-zero scalar, or adding a scalar multiple of one row to another. Okay, so those are the standard ways for us to solve a system of linear equations. And elementary column operations are on a are the similar ones, right? Column operations. <laughs> So we now define what is an elementary matrix. It is obtained from IN by applying one elementary operation. Okay. So that is the definition of an uh, elementary matrix. Now let A be a matrix. B is obtained from A by one row operation then B is equal to EA, where E is the corresponding elementary operation. Row, if it's row, then B is equal to EA, where E is the elementary matrix apply the same operation. And the converse also holds. Okay, So if we have B equals to EA, then B is obtained from A by a row operation, where E represents the operation, right? the elementary matrix. Okay. So the proof we just skipped it, just calculate them. And note that so does the column hold. So row is B equal to E A and for column is A E. Okay, so note this. Okay. Now here's a theorem is that if E is invertible, I mean E are invertible and, and the inverse is of the same type. Well for A, if interchange R A R J, right? E and E inverse are the same, right? You just interchange it again, so it remains the same, right? Right, you just think about it. We just, we use this theorem to help us, right? And if E is kappa times RJ, the E negative one, there's one over kappa times RJ, right? And if E is KRI plus RJ, then the inverse is negative kappa ri plus rj right so the proof is done so elementary matrices are invertible and the inverse is of same type okay so here comes the part two is the rank and matrix inversions so before we start notice the part covered by uh, highlighted by yellow those part, like we have to do some proving, okay? So those part are all the proofs we need in the future. <laughs> so first, a lemma. So if V, W is the same dimension where T is an isomorphism, for any V not a subspace of V, T of V not is subspace of W. And dimension of V not is the same as dimension of V, T V not. So isomorphism preserves dimension for subspaces, okay? <laughs> so the first one is just by subspace test. I'll just skip it because V0 itself is a vector space, okay? And for part B, well, part B, we want to show that it preserves a dimension, right? So first we pick a basis for V0. And we know that the span of this set is equal to TV naught, right? This is easy to check, right? First, we have this trivially, right? And for this, well, for any element in TV naught, right? For any element in TV naught, um, it is equal to, right? W is equal to TV naught. Right, W is equal to T of some V, right? Where V is in V naught. But we have a basis of V naught, right? 
So, so V is equal to some F I V I. Then T V, we use the linearity. So this gives the span. And those sets are linearly independent. This is by um, because because t is in uh, injective, right? They're in independent because if you have alpha i t v i, then is equal to what t of alpha i v i, right? Is equal to zero then this is equal to zero, right? because t is injective, and which means that all the alpha i is equal to zero, right? which means that they are independent, okay? So it spans tv, and they're independent, so there are a basis of tv naught, and they are exactly k elements, which is the same number, right? So tv naught and v naught has the same dimension. Okay, so this is a lemma, okay? So here comes the theorem. The theorem says that, well, VWY is a vector space over the field F. So V from V to T from V to W, R from W to Y, S from Y to Z, they're all linear maps. Then we have this inequality. Remember, what is the definition of rank? It's the dimension of the range. And if, if those two are invertible, then we just take out them, the rank are the same. Okay, so this is the, um, the theorem. So to prove this, we need to show something that is weaker. Because those are uh, three compositions. But if we can show some results for two compositions, right? We first show that rank of RT is, we first, we show this is true. So, okay, so this is the first question for my assignment, okay? We want to show this is true. Well, this is, uh, so first we know that T is in VW, R is in WY. We know that R of T is again a linear map from V to Y, okay? If R of T is a linear map from V of Y, then we know that R of T of V, right, is a subspace of Y. Also, R of W is a subspace of Y. Right? Right? We we have those two. Just we're using everything that's given, right? Now we know that T V is contained in W. Right? T V is always contained in W. So R T V is contained in R W. And they're both subspace of Y, so we can apply subspace test to this again. We see that RTV is a subspace of RW. So we have this. This, which means that we have ranked RT is less than equal to rank R. Okay, so essentially we're using this. And we're using these two conditions and we use the subspace test to see that this is a subspace of RW. So we use this one. Now, again, this one. So first we show this, right? We showed this less than this one. Now we want to show this less than this one. Rank T. <laughs> we know that TV is a subspace of W, right? If it's a subspace of W, we pick a basis of it, right? We pick a basis. Then we know that R of TV is equal to span of this, <laughs> right? Well, why? Because first we have we have we have this because each W I is in T V and R is linear. Right? So so we, we know this because each W I each W is in T V. Right? Each W is in T V, so we apply R. We apply R and use the fact that R is linear, we see that the span of this is again an R of T V. And TV itself is a vector space, so we can like addition, scalar multiplication is all closed. Now, for Y naught and R of TV, right? 
For why not in R of t we want to express at the span of this? So why not is equal to R of tv naught, right? tv naught, then we can express tv naught as as a linear combination of their basis, right? As their basis, and we apply R on both sides, which means that R of tv naught, which is y naught, is in the span of this, right? By definition, so we have this. So this set spans R of tv, which means that if this is a spanning set, which means that it contains a subset B such that B is a sub B is a basis of R of t, right? Which means that the dimension of this set, the dimension of this, is less than or equal to their length P, right? Because it is a spanning set. The spanning set contains a, a basis. Every spanning set contains a basis, right? So rank of R, R of t is less than or equal to rank of t. So by both 1 and 2, we have this, and again, we have this. So we see that we see that rank of t is less than the minimum of them. It is less than both of them. Right? <laughs> okay, so we show this. Now, rt become an lvy, s is lyz. We apply the above result again. So the rank of rs of rt is minimum of rank s and rank of rt. But rank of rt is less than equal to rank r. Right? So, so we're done. Right. Now, if S and T are invertible, the story gets a bit more uh, tricky. The story gets complicated. So first, if S and T are invertible, now first we pick a basis for R W. Okay. We pick a basis for R W. So we have W one to W K, or we have this. So each v1, each vi, we have a wi such that our wi is in vi, right? And we have this set. Now we let a random basis, we get a random basis for kernel of r. We just pick a random basis for kernel of r, right? We know that a k is equal to rank of r. Or is the basis of r w, sorry, so, 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 k is the rank of r. And p minus k, which is the length of this, is equal to nullity of r. So they sum up to the dimension of w, right? They sum up to the dimension of w. And we note that this set is our linear independent. It is not hard to check. It is not hard to check, too. It is linear independent, right? Because we know that... Um, those sets are independent, right? Because if we have alpha i w i is equal to zero, we apply r on both sides. Right, which is equal to alpha i, y i is equal to zero, which means that all the alpha i are equal to zero, right? So they are linear independent, and they are bases, so they are automatically independent. Now we see that if there are any like intersections going on, right, it is leave you to check, it leave you to check that they are linear independent. It is not hard to check. So w1 to wp is the basis of w, right? Because it is a linear independent independent set with the same length as a dimension, which means that it should be a basis. Now, since T is an isomorphism, right? Remember W. Okay, we've had a basis of W. Okay, we have constructed a basis of W. Now, because T is from T is from what? T is from V to W, right? For each those, we get their corresponding uh, unique input, right? The unique pre-image of each element, 
they're all uniquely determined, right? And first we pick this element, and again, we okay. So we claim that this set as the basis a kernel of R T. Okay. So first we show that this is a basis of kernel of R T. Well, it, it spans and they're uh, learning independent, so it's an independent spanning set. It was easy to check, so I just skip it. So this is a basis of kernel of R T. Right? And we have this. <laughs> Why? Because well, the k plus one to p is the basis of kernel of RT. Okay, the k plus one to p is the kernel of RT. And from one to k, right, from one to k, this, um, <laughs> we have this is the range of R of T, the span of this. And it is, again, not hard to check. Okay, so we just take a look. Well, if x is in the range of R of T, x is R T V, R some W, W, then we have a independent HWI, right? Because if it starts from n to start on k, because k plus 1, k for w, remember, w from k plus 1 to p is a basis of kernel of RT, right? So they are a subset of kernel of RT. So after we apply r, right, from n, we just go to k. HWI, some TVI, some R of TVI from, from 1 to K, which is the span from 1 to K. Okay? So we have this, which means that the span of this set, this set is the span of R of W and WK. But our, each of R of W and R of WK is U to Y1 and YK. Right? R of W and WK. Um, right, right, y1, yk, it is the span of y1, yk, so range of r of t, right, this is equal to the range of r, we have this as, as at the beginning, right, uh, because they are a, a basis for RW, right? They're basis for RW. <laughs> so, they are a basis for RW, which is range of R. So, range of R of T is equal to range of R. So, they have the same dimension. Okay, now, because S is an isomorphism, right? RT is learned from here. So, RTV is a subspace of Y. So we apply the lemma, it preserves dimension, right? S applied to this is equal to the same dimension R of T, which means that the rank of S R T is equal to rank of R of T is equal to rank of R. Okay. We apply the lemma, right? Okay, so this is the, I mean, I'll just continue. Okay, I'll just move on. I'll just keep on going. Okay, right, so now we define a rank of a matrix is the rank of the, the map LA. Where LA is the map that takes X to AX. Okay. Recall that A is invertible invertible if only if LA is invertible. If dimension of V is equal to N, then the operator is invertible if and only if A is surjective. Which means that rank of T is equal to N. So this means that a squared matrix is invertible if and only if the rank of the the map is equal to n. This is equal to n if and only if the rank of A is equal to n. The definition. So the matrix is invertible if and only if it is a full rank. <laughs> okay? So here's a theorem. Vw finite dimensional DC order basis. T from V to W. Linear map. Then the rank of T it's the same as the rank of the 
a matrix of t. Okay, so we just right we have this good good equality. So this is easy because recall we have this diagram. Right? We call, we have this diagram above before, where rho d rho c are isomorphisms, and this map is equal to this 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 right is equal to rho d negative one of t, t rho c of t of rho d negative one so the rank of this is equal to rank of this map but these two are isomorphisms we can take away which is the rank of t so neat right it is so satisfying right because we proved we proved this long thing just for us just for us to show that the rank of the matrix is equal to rank of the linear map so now we're officially cool because if we can we again have this right we again have this because la lb the rank of ab is the rank of lab which is the rank of la of a no, lb and we have we have R is invertible, then rank A, rank RA, rank AS, rank RAS. We just consider the LR and LS, right? You can just take a look. Right? It's really quick, right? It's all by the theorem developed above. So here's a corollary. Elementary row column operations are rank preserving, right? Because if you multiply on the right or multiply on the left, they're invertible matrices, so it preserves the rank. It preserves the rank. So elementary row call operation are rank preserving. So here's a notation. The column space of a matrix is the span of the columns, and the row space is the span of the rows. So we let the rank of A, we have that the rank of A is equal to the dimension of the column space which is the number of independent columns. Well, why? Because the range of LA is equal to this, right? Well, this is the span of all A times EJ, where EJ are the standard ordered bases, right? The range is the span on the basis, right? Or on the spanning set, right? EJs, or but each A E J gives you the column C J, which is the span of the columns, which is column A. So if we apply dimension on both sides, they're again the same. Well, this gives you rank A, and this gives you what, as desired, right? And given a matrix, well, we we want to know that what's the rank. Now, if we just apply elementary operations, we see that rank A is equal to 2, right? There are only two independent rows. Now, here's another theorem. So for any matrix, suppose the rank is equal to R, then R should be less than both of them. And this will not be proven is that the finite number of elementary operations A can be formed into this form. This will not be proven, okay? So it is clear that R is the rank of A is, the, is equal to this, and rank of A is of the number of independent columns, which is less than the number of total columns, which is again N. Right, so R is less than or equal to M and N. Now, Right, so each D can be B and B A C. Product of row operation and product of a column operation. And here is an important corollary. Is that the rank of the transpose is the same as the rank. And rank of A is the dimension of the row space. So row, row space and column space, consider the dimension, they all give you back the rank of the matrix. So First, we know that BAC is equal to this. So R is equal to rank of BAC is equal to rank A, right? Note that if we take the transpose, 
because C, B are invertible, right? So C here, B here, and also invertible, so we can cancel out. So it gives you this. We're done. We're really quick. And we also know that the following are equivalent. An invertible matrix, if and only if it's product of elementary matrices. From A to B, we know that I n is equal to B A C, right? Then we see we have this. And some observations. Easy. <laughs> right? So now we just ended with some definition. It's the argumented matrix whose first n columns are a and the last p columns are b. So if we, if we can this argument matrix, it looks like this. Okay. And we see that we have with this by direct computation. We move by b to a, gives you b a, and b to i n gives you b. Okay, so this is by direct computation. So hey, I just uh, finished this section for now. Okay, I'll see you guys.